Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Thought Sauna. This is a podcast where we talk about weird dreams, odd laws, and interesting thoughts. I'm Brett Space Jam Hanrahan. And I'm Sam Rictacular Risley. I'm Cyan Professional Adult Disappointer Haskins. <laughs> All right, so Why is it that you always have round. the best ones? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My mom heard the podcast with the E.T. Dick thing, so that's pretty was... self-explanatory. Let me, if you're listening <laughs> to this, this to is start. an apology. Thinking about his reputation. Yeah, my reputation. I'm sorry about that. It's, it's all good. We can't, we can't be worrying about the stuff we talk about. Unless it it's about like E.T.'s dick again. We can't yeah. we can't do that one again. <laughs> you know what? Without further ado, let's just get into it. Who wants to uh, go first this time? E- you know what? I'll go first with the right. thought. Okay. I can't with remember the, the last time Brett went first. <clears throat> I, 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 We've only recorded I, a million episodes. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. This one comes from Reality Bites underscore that's very important it's actually reality bites is this the thought with an underscore yes it's the thought on reddit all competitions should have a control competitor who is unskilled to give a reference for how amazing the competitors are i automatically volunteer to be that person (laughs) sam i knew you would i knew i knew you'd be perfect for it i'm so happy I just I want to see. I volunteer to be the baseline for absolute average. I I want you to be running on the track with your toe shoes. And uh, just, we didn't have to bring those up. Uh, we just like grabbing at the other up. people. Like, come on, grabbing come at them on. with my toe shoes. <laughs> with your toes, <laughs> grabbing at them with your toes, grabbing their ankles, doing a handstand all the way down. I'm gonna wear toe <laughs> shoes, but for my hands, gloves. Mm. Yeah, that's that's gloves. Uh, pretty good, but I just I just love this image of just a regular dude. I guess being Sam. Yeah. Just like wearing themselves out, like swimming. Honestly, like kind of okay. half knows how to swim. I will say I'm a decent swimmer. I I what? probably this couldn't. What? I am a very I'm a very strong swimmer. He did, Sam. You did do water polo for a while there, didn't you? I'm not saying I'm like super good at it. I'm just saying I I uh Sir, please do not dodge the question. Did you or did you not do water polo? I did do time? water polo. <laughs> oh my god. Sam, you're the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I, I love remembering all these things about you. <laughs> so, when water polo comes around, we'll have to substitute you out for another just average Joe. For me. For, yeah, for you, Stein. Yeah. The last time you played a sport was baseball in elementary school? Did you play baseball? No. I... I did I did play baseball for a couple seasons when I was four and five. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing. By the way, here's the fucking thing. I didn't ever play baseball. I played t-ball because I was like a kid or whatever. Yeah. Same. Right. And they wouldn't let me play baseball because my birthday was after June. Oh, they got you with the with the little details. Yeah. See, so I didn't know, get to I play baseball. T-ball, and they always put me in like far right outfield because they know they <laughs> knew no, no kid hits. my age could hit it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I was in that exact same position when I played baseball. <laughs> <laughs> they like put me in a position they knew no one would ever hit it to. <laughs> but no, I, I I played I played sports when I was in high school. And team sports. And you know what? Now, you actually, you do emo night. I do emo night. Which is pretty a pretty aggressive sport. You go, you get up on stage and you scream to an audience. When emo songs are playing. Which, by the way, I think the stuff they play at emo night, My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy, Paramore, would be perfect stuff to watch sports to. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> if they, I if they see, just kind of had that. Oh, you have like no Lincoln idea Park. how badly I want to see fucking, like, I don't know, uh, like, 
football best hits moments set to fucking Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. <laughs> fucking, they did that it's though. It's a long video. Wait, Remember they that did that? We were, having, we were having dinner at my house and the NFL was on and they started playing a Paris song. Oh yeah. They played Heaven by Paris. Well, And I was like, what? Well, it was like a transition into another thing. It wasn't like during the game. No, no. I want okay, but I, what I want to see football montage to Black Parade or like yes. Cut This is my last resort by Papa Roach. <laughs> this is my last resort by Papa Roach. I imagine just like an Olympic track team and they just go 3 2 1 crawling in my skin. So here's something interesting that happened at Emo Night. Is that they played numb, but they played the one with Jay Z on it, <laughs> encore. And it was really more. weird seeing all like the grown up emo kids rapping to fucking <laughs> encore. Do you want more? And I <laughs> was like, Hova. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have an idea. I want to hear like, I want to like make our own Olympic team. Like we go off and form our own nation. Oh. And I enter in the so Olympics, far. and then when we win something. You know how when first play, whoever wins first place, their national anthem plays? Yeah. Our national anthem is going to be Numb by Linkin Park. And That's too so perfect. It would be perfect just sitting, walk, like standing hand over heart on the podium with an Olympic mm-hmm. gold medal, medal, like, crawling in my well, skin. Well, that's... That's a different song, you see. Wait, that's, wait, which that's one's crawling numb? Crawling by Linkin Park. Numb is the one that's Tied like. Gotta be what you yeah. want me to be. Oh yeah, no, it's still numb. Something. Keep it numb. I've become so, so numb. numb. Yeah, definitely that one. And you're just above every other nation in the world. Yeah, singing numb yeah. by Linkin Park. I've become so numb. Well, I, I was playing Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, I was playing Mario Kart with Avery and her roommates, and. Uh, it was very high stakes. I'm not very good at Mario Kart. And I had gotten like two first places in a row in this cup. Oh. And I was about to get my third. And I was like about to start singing my victory song, but I couldn't think of a victory song <laughs> quick enough. So I'm, as I'm going, I was like, turn away. <laughs> if you could get me a drink of water, cause my lips are cracked and faded. And like... I was like, well, I it guess it seems kind of perfect. I guess "Cancer" by My Chemical Romance is my victory song in Mario Kart. Isn't that by Twenty One Pilots? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was by Twenty One Pilots. Yes, right? the all fucking. We're not gonna talk about that, but I fucking hate Twenty One Pilots and that cover of "Cancer." I'm what? pretty sure it was. It was in the cover. I'm pretty sure. What was the shower thought again? Um, that Twenty One Pilots' is cover of "Cancer" by My Chemical Romance is terrible it and is bastardizes sick. I the song. I don't know what you're talking about. It's terrible. I really love it. I it's feel like awful. I'm some hot water with this. <laughs> the all competition should have a control p- competitor who is unskilled to give a reference for how amazing the competitors are. Turns. What about this? What if it turns out you put that you put that person in there, that average Joe, and, and they the just happen to be totally amazing. Yeah, what if they're amazing? What if Olympic, you know, players aren't that great actually? <laughs> <laughs> what if I? What if I could? You're get, right. It's not like they've trained their whole lives for this moment. It's just editing. It's just like tricky camera it's work. It's just it's just the camera work. I get on the gymnastics, you know, court. court. I don't know floor. The gymnastics floor. And then the floor, 3D and I just, animators take over. <laughs> yeah, and they just kind of, uh, they kind of, uh, you know, put my face onto someone's body who can actually do it. And that's just what everyone does. No, they do like the thing where they like do the dots on all your joints and then they just like motion <laughs> yeah. animate it. Mo-capping? I'm just in like a in like a suit. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called mocapping, motion capture. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I got the dots all over and I'm, so, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love the Olympics. The Olympics are great. I'm there. I'm, Did I'm you there. just call them the Ol- the, the Olympics? The Olympics, baby. The Olympics. That's that's what the real Olympics... That sounds Olympics... like Limp Biscuit took over the Olympics. <laughs> the Limp Biscuits. Oh, you didn't know, Sam? The 2018 Limp Biscuits. That's Fred right. Durst We're gonna... from... <laughs> yeah, from Limp Biscuit actually made the Olympics. So you know what's actually kind of funny? What? Oh, no. <laughs> Perfect segue into my dream. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Here we Jesus. go. Sorry. The other day, I had a dream that I was out somewhere in a city... Not sure which one. 
I ended up meeting and hanging out with Fred Durst at a party. <laughs> His face was the same as I remember, think 1999, mm. but he had a beer gut hanging out of his shirt that looked like a deflated pregnancy. Uh. I woke up feeling awkward. So what you're it's telling weird me is that we brought up just Fred, met Durst. Fred Durst in real life. I think it's just a memory that this person had. Yeah. A long lost memory from a past life. <laughs> Fred Durst, the the CEO and founder of the Olympics, uh, <laughs> at a party with a deflated pregnancy. The deflated pregnancy beer gut. Man, that sounds <laughs> great. Okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a great image to like picture. Well, because I imagine it's not like a party where like a lot of celebrities are. It's just a normal kind of like college like, party. Yeah, like it's yeah. just a bunch so of fucking like twenty one year olds. Deflated pregnancy gut. Does that just mean he's got like a, just flabs of skin hanging out under his yes. shirt? Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. But he's what still that just means. like a skinny dude. <laughs> Everything else about him is skinny. His arm, he's kind of a lanky, skinny dude. Like legs and arms yeah. are kind of you know scrawny. But then you just get to his torso, <laughs> and it's just the most. And like, it looks like Iggy Pop. <laughs> Sam, please tell me you've looked at Iggy Pop's body. <laughs> I'm Googling Iggy Pop right now. Oh, thank God. I want your live reaction. <laughs> you won't be able to find a picture of him wearing clothes, so you'll be fine. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, haven't even hit, I haven't even hit search yet. Just like the profile picture that pops up. Mm. Oh, man. It's just I mean, his torso. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy Pop, and the photo is just like from belly button to rib cage. Yeah, that's his this man's shot. skin doesn't fit him. I know, <laughs> oh, I know, Sam. I know all too well. It, this, <laughs> like, he bought a large skin when he was being born. <laughs> I'm oh. uncomfortable. Oh man, there's a really, there's one that's like. Him and he's super ripped, and his skin is really tight on him. Is so, like, like a you can see picture all his muscle. No, he looks old. Like his face looks old. But, but then right next to it, so there's young. a picture where his skin's all wrinkly and flabby and just hanging off of him. And yeah. I'm like, did they put clothespins on the back of it and pinch his skin <laughs> tighter for the picture? It always just comes loose during the show, so you know it uh. never usually works. Uh, ugh. So yeah, Fred Durst this with that body. This is E.T. again. We it's can't, shut up. No, we can't, no, we can't go back and. I e. was e. interrupted at the beginning, but I was gonna say that this was like the decree: no more E.T. No, no more. <laughs> You're no the more E.T. E. talk. I know. I made a mistake, and I took him in. I ah. I brought him into this world, and I can take him out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the fucking trigger, piglet. Fred Durst wrinkly dick. No, all right. No, no. Whoo, done. Done. Let's move on to more Fred Durst based topics. Okay, Fred Durst wrinkly deflated beer gut pregnancy. Is it is it like does it just look like a deflated pregnancy or was it a deflated pregnancy? Could he slap someone with it? <sighs> I don't like the way you took that i don't that was a weird direction and we're gonna follow through with it <laughs> so yeah fred like, durst has to grab, train his body he absolutely he can slap the, people like, with it could he grab like the loose loose skin and like jump into the air and just bring it down on top of someone's head? <laughs> no no hold on hold on yes! is he yes! able he jumps into the air is he able to grab it and slap people with it or does he have the ability <laughs> to move the skin flaps. He can move it like a hand. Exactly. Like, they just move on their own. That's how I picture it. I picture that, like, he has full control he over has... them. I, I do love that image of him jumping up. My original image was him, like, oh, you see that, like, coin on the ground? Why don't you get that and, like, bring it to his level? But I love him jumping up and using the momentum. From I, have another, I have another idea for you. Yeah. The pocket is hollow. Or not the pocket, but his belly is hollow, and he uses it like a kangaroo pouch. Oh, <laughs> oh you hit me with a left jab, Sam. I didn't see that coming, and I don't like it at all. I don't like that you <laughs> called it his pocket. 
<laughs> it's his Polly Pocket. I'm not a fan of that. It's his, it's his kangaroo pocket. So you just, like, is it like an event? Like he sits in a chair in the mall and everyone comes and lines up to sit in Fred Durst's mm. pocket? <laughs> like, what is this? Would you prefer I call it his socket? His what? His socket. I don't like that one any more than pocket. What about socket pocket? Does, it doesn't you don't get have, better. You don't have to call it anything, <laughs> actually, guys. <laughs> We don't have to give it a title. His pouch. His. We'll just call it his pouch. His paunch. I his think paunch. that's worse. This, this makes so much sense, though. <laughs> Listen, hear I me out. I want Fred Durst to scoop me up into his pot pouch and make me feel safe. It, he's so warm. And after after Limp Biscuit, Limp Biscuit was in the prime in their prime in the nineties, right? Yeah. They were a big deal. And mm-hmm. they fell yeah. off the face of the earth. This guy gets <clears throat> sad. You know, kinda gets all it's all fat. But you know what he does? He What's lives that? out his name, Limp Biscuit. Mm-hmm. He's all limp he just, everywhere. I was gonna say that his, and he just his stores body has biscuits finally biscuits in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, <he's>, his body's <laughs> finally become a limp biscuit. That's why everyone wants to get in that pouch because he has biscuits in there. They all want a bite. They all want a bite of some biscuits. He just sits at the mall like Santa. And, just... and he's just like, everyone, come get some biscuits. And you line up. I have no idea ticket. what Fred Durst sounds like, but I'm going to be like, oh, mate, you want a biscuit? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm Fred Durst sounds like. I'm going to tell you this much. Like... He's not Australian. <laughs> okay. Um, but oh, maybe uh, he picked up the you accent. You want a it's biscuit, Moss? It's me, Fred Durst, isn't it? I'm in Limp Biscuit, aren't I? I'm real big in the 90s. In my pouch. I was real big in what the 90s, wasn't I? I don't know. I'm <laughs> Sam's making a tomfoolery of my name, huh? I think we should go back to the Australian accent that he learned to, you know, get in his vocabulary. When he was training with the kangaroos. I've got tons yes. of biscuits in my pouch. What? I've yeah. got biscuits. Tell me it's funny I got biscuits. We're that's, going, that's when he's got a bunch of biscuits in his own mouth. Yeah, and we're getting back yeah. to our roots of Sam doing impressions. Oh, my God. Which are always great. Which are always so good. I do kind of want you to look up a Limp Biscuit song, uh, preferably uh, Nookie, I, and no, try I to know, do an I impersonation know, listened, of it. I've listened to Nookie. Then how do you have, not know what Fred Durst sounds like? Let's pull it up. Let, let me pull up Spotify. Yeah, real quick, refresh your mind. Uh, Limp Biscuit had like three really good songs. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Limp Biscuit. Thank you. This Limp is why there's so much up, Fred Durst content I'm step in this away episode. From my computer. Okay, perfect. So in the meantime, I'm just in the meantime we can talk about. So that way my headphones don't pick up on the mic. All right. Uh, okay. In the meantime, in the meantime, we can talk about our sponsor, which is Fred Durst. Fred Durst. I uh, thank you so much for paying us to do this episode and talk about you. Uh, Fred Durst has a new TV show coming out at NBC. Oh, really? Yeah. It's called Check Out My Pouch. It's a show where he goes around <laughs> town, up in New York City, and asks people to check out his pouch. It's kind of like a hidden camera show. Yeah. Like he'll just go up to it's people. Kind of like Billy on the Street. Exactly. And it, it, he'll just kind of w- walk around and like, get in my pouch. I'm like, what? Get, okay, get, okay. Come on, get in my pouch. I think I got it. And then in this pouch is like, it's biscuits, but it's also like something else that they like. It's like a sword. Yeah. You know, like you go and you never know what's going to be in there. A ladder. $2,500, the it. jackpot. <laughs> the anyway, jack pouch. D- do check I out think, Check Out My Pouch by uh, Fred it. Durst on NBC 7 p.m. Starting February 2nd. All right, now back to the show. Sam, please do your Fred Durst impression. All right, I got a headbang for it, so I'm holding on to my headphones. Okay. This could be bad. That's reasonable. I did it all for the biscuit. The biscuit. (laughs) The biscuit. So it's in my pouch now. Yeah. 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 The biscuit. (laughs) Thank you. It's Sam? It's not Sam, though. It's Fred Durst. It was Fred Durst the whole time. That's right. It's me, Fred Durst. Mm. Fred, I'm so glad Who you came on the like show. Who sounds like a mixture of Sam and Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? <laughs> and the whole gang's here. 
<laughs> We're all here. Welcome to Thought Sauna with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Sam, and Fred Durst. And William Frederick Durst. <laughs> well, you didn't need to read that. No, I'm, his, I'm, I'm on his Wikipedia, and I'm just having <laughs> a good you. time. But I need to put that away. <laughs> Fucking. Did it wow. mention anything about his uh, biscuit pouch? <clears throat> yeah, in, in the, the upcoming projects, when he's talking yeah. about the show... What's in my pouch on NBC? Yeah. What's in the pouch? Thanks, Fred, again, for doing your theme song for us. Oh, welcome back. Sam just entered the studio again. Uh, Sam, did you bring your law? <clears throat> I did. Let's hear it. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with Limp Biscuit or Fred Durst? Because if so, that would be amazing. Um... Well, there's the possibility that Limp Biscuit was the reason this law was created. <clears throat> Ooh, let's let's go in with that. All right, mind. conspiracy theories. Okay, so it's from my birth state of Colorado. Mm-hmm. Specifically, the city of Alamosa. Oh. And in Alamosa, Colorado, it is illegal to throw missiles at cars. <laughs> 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 and it's legal. Is it legal everywhere else in the state? Uh, it's only in Alamosa that they have this law. Okay, so anywhere else in Colorado, you can throw a missile at a call car if you so choose. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me set y'all up the scene of how this law got started, right? Okay. So Fred Durst was season three of What's <laughs> in the Pouch. <laughs> he was just hopping around Alamosa. What is he actually so in the special now? Alamosa episode? <laughs> What's that? He was hopping? He was hopping around. Yeah. He's so he's an kangaroo actual spirit. kangaroo now. Fred Durst is just straight up an anamorph. He's trying his best. He's he's really trying his best. Walking around to people on the street. He goes up to someone, does this ca- signature catch line. Hey, what's in what's come in my pouch? The nookie. And then they <laughs> it was the nookie. <laughs> and and someone goes in and they're like, Fred, this is a this is a missile. You like, got it. And he goes, he's like, yes. Yeah. And then he throws it. He's like, yeah. He throws it and he throws the person at the car. And he says, if any other place in Colorado makes this illegal, I will destroy this whole state. <laughs> so the city council was like, I guess it's only us. Outlaw that. <laughs> They're like, all right, come come to Alamo. So if you, re- you want to make sure your car is not missile, missile torn. So that's the only city in America where it's safe. Thanks for joining us on our Fred Durst theme podcast. Yeah, this is our Thread Thread Durst theme podcast. That's actually his clothing brand that's coming out. Yeah, Thread Thread Durst. Durst. Let's go into our next sponsor. We are also sponsored by Thread Durst. (laughs) Coming out to the missiles that destroyed half of Alamosa many years ago (laughs) in the Great War. Apparently, his clothes are made out of car parts. It's it's so fun and biscuits. Coming to Target, Walmart. And Old Navy. <laughs> only the highest, only the high class places have thread durst. <laughs> <laughs> so throwing throwing a missile at a car. If I did that like outside, like if I had a missile on me and I walked outside into the street and I threw a missile, there's no legal repercussions for me. No. I think most people would be gen- just like generally impressed that you were able to lift and toss a missile. Yeah. yeah. So in in the city, Alamosa, if I'm remembering correctly, if you shoot the missile at the car, it's fine. Totally legal. Totally legal. You, shooting's just a different kind of throwing. No, it's not. No, it's yeah. Read right. read the thro- fine th- print. Shooting right? it says is throwing by four by a type of an explosive force. Yeah, I I'm sorry, I got all mixed up there. Yeah, I feel if you throw a missile at a car, it, is is it gonna explode? I feel no. like it needs more like I think power. It's just gonna hit the car and like crush it. Unless Fred Durst does it, then well, it duh. will explode. Well, you gotta be careful around Fred Durst. You don't like him when he's angry. He gets his pouch out. He inverts his pouch. <laughs> uh, he can he can swallow people into it. Mm. Like Kirby. Just. Mm. <sighs> Okay, so that means now I need a cover of that, like, but like heavy metal Limp Biscuit style. 
yeah, heavy like metal. Rap, <clears throat> rap metal kind of rap crossover. Metal. Rap core. Rap core. <laughs> New metal, as they may call it. <laughs> Which is what my streaming service calls Rage Against the Machine. Rap core. What? I was like, yeah, no. I guess. I, guess. <laughs> I mean, all right. I... I really do. If we could, if we could try to get off Fred Durst for a couple seconds, okay. it's going to be hard. I really do want to know what happened to make this law a thing. Yeah. I want to know the situation. Who was so pissed off at this <laughs> dude that they got a missile and threw it at them? The fucking Hulk, man. I don't. I don't hold on. Oh, what are you doing over there, Sam? Doing I'm... some research. What? I'm trying to go and read the full text of the law. Okay. In the meantime, what kind of missile? I I imagine just the kind of stereotypical, like just like, you know. Yeah. What could it be like nuclear? Okay. That would be pretty the full crazy. text of the law. The full text is one paragraph. Oh, great. Get, let's see it. Let's have it. Throwing missiles at vehicles. Stop. It shall be unlawful for any person to knowingly project any missile at or against any vehicle or equipment designed for the transportation of persons or property. Stop. <laughs> okay. That whole law is two sentences. Why did he read it to us like it was a telegram? Because I had to... And then I had to clarify that it was two sentences, and that was it. And also that the first sentence is literally just throwing missiles at vehicles, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it said, what was the verb it used in the second sentence? Like projecting. Yeah. Like it shall missiles? be unlawful so launching for any a person to unlawful. knowingly project. Okay. So that does include like shooting. Okay. But if I got a projector. <laughs> All right. And I put an image of a missile <laughs> against a car via this projector. Am I then projecting a missile onto this vehicle, and could I get arrested, or at least a high fine, or a slap on the wrist, and a, and a note on my permanent record? Yeah. Yeah, they will, they will take you in for that. That is, that takes a lot of setup to do. If you could do that, like, cleanly, I, th I think that, I don't know, maybe they won't arrest you. Maybe it'll be impressive. Yeah, it's like, maybe they just like, wow. Like, where'd you find a projector? And I'm imagining, like, the projectors we had in third grade, where you got to put, like, the laminated paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, on the surface, and it would project outward. <laughs> My question is, what does it define as a missile? Yeah. That's, I mean, there's a lot of, I don't know, there's so much space for this. It's so vague. Okay, could've, I'm looking up very... the exact definition of a missile. Yeah. Okay. Could have An very... object that is forcibly propelled at a target, either by hand or from a mechanical weapon. Okay, so literally anything thrown is a Pretty missile. Pretty much anything can be a missile. Fred Durst <laughs> throwing his biscuits at a car could be a missile. Me throwing myself at a car could be a missile. Okay, yeah. so this has evolved just... from it's illegal to throw weapons-grade mi wep or. Not weapons grade. It's illegal to throw military grade weapons at a car, too. You can't throw rocks, kids. <laughs> it's just not nice. I'm pr okay, hold on. If I remember right, I think Alamosa is a pretty heavily military town. Okay, yeah, there's a there's quite a, there's a there's a couple military bases near Alamosa, which makes sense. I'm pretty sure there's a military academy that All right. So Maybe maybe some rioters throwing yeah. like things at tanks, you know. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure uh, a rock I... thrown by a child with a slingshot will really hurt that tank. No, I don't like that. We like made it real. It, exactly. That's why I want to bring it back to missiles being thrown at cars. Yeah, that's why I want to bring it back to just average Joes, like people, and like just those average, like you know, buy and go those missiles that you can get at McDonald's. Yeah, dollar menu missiles. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I guess we're talking about fireworks now, but I want it. I want it more of more. tossing an unlit firework at a car. <laughs> ah, take that. You can you can use that if you want. Uh, illegal, unlawful. You're arrested. Death penalty. Death penalty. That's well, it's Colorado. It's what is the Texas. penalty for throwing? You go you go to Alcatraz and then you get death penalty. <laughs> 
Dude, is that the dude that <gasps> oh, threw Jesus. an unlit firework at a car? <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Gotta stay away from that guy. Yeah, everyone in prison's afraid of you. <laughs> exactly. There's like, oh shit, I killed a dude, but like, you threw a missile at a car once. That's like, dude, that's... That's not... That would be sick to go to prison and say like that okay. you're the reason that that law was made. My you know? my thing is my thing is about Alamosa like this is the most like bizarre law in Alamosa because all the others like it says weird but like they're not honestly that weird. They are a little old school but still weird like the one right below throwing missiles at a car is illegal is keeping a house where unmarried persons are allowed to have sex is prohibited. Then after then after that, to own a dog over three months of age, you must attain a license. Okay. What? So so this is the oddest law to come out of that city specifically. Yeah, and then right below that, persons may not urinate in public. Oh, I well, mean, that's a that's normal kinda, law. Everyone, that's weird. We dude. all we all have. Yeah. Whoa! Wonder how that law got made. Oh, oh you think someone pissed on a dressed? car that got hit by a missile? And the guy that got hit by the missile was so scared he accidentally, you know, pissed himself. In public. In public. And, and got just... arrested. And then a bunch of people who saw the missile the get like, hey, no themselves out of forward. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking lifeguard is like, no running. No peeing. <laughs> yeah. Dude just got blown up by a missile. No, no peeing. peeing outside. You can't pee in public. Go indoors. Stop it. <laughs> Uh, so in conclusion, Fred Durst. Oh, I got one more tie in. I got one more oh. tie in. Oh shit. Okay. I was ready to, I was ready to tie it and tie it off and I throw got it in the trash. But... One more tie in for that ties into this law of in Alamosa, throwing missiles at cars is illegal, but in Aspen, Colorado, catapults may not be fired at buildings. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> and this was made. Uh, this was made in the medieval times, of course. <laughs> the medieval These times two laws of America. Were made at the exact same times because at the exact same time because first someone loaded a missile into a catapult and chucked it at a building in Aspen, and it flew so far it hit a car in uh, Alamosa. <laughs> and of course, it was Fred Durst. Amazing. Yep. <laughs> of course, Fred Durst tried to <laughs> try to fling a rock at. I don't know, his old record company that dropped him. He was pissed <laughs> off. Man, thank it you, It seems Fred like a very Durst. Limp Bizkit thing to do, honestly, though. It does, yeah. It breaks shit, dude. I'm pretty sure that's a Limp Bizkit song. Yeah. I. It's actually surprising how few Limp Bizkit references we made. Because I don't know much about yeah. them. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fine. I think we should keep it that way. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, 2018 is not the year of Limp Bizkit. They don't come back. No. Nope. Sorry, y'all. Better hope for next year. <laughs> All right, I, I think I think we're about done, y'all. Yep, I think I think so. Thank you, everyone, for coming into the thought sauna and joining me and my sweaty voice. Make sure to bring a towel next time, cause man, we're sopping. Mm, I don't like yeah. that last part you added. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, see y'all next later. week. Bye. Cut it. Bye.